centre circle. It's on already. As Peter Carey, Brian Sheehan, and the umpires, and Brian Sheehan gets us underway. Mock horse wins out of the middle for the pies. Grabbed by Russell. Daniels for St Kilda. The hand pass comes through to Burke. Out of the centre square. Low. Christian spoils him, but he's into Lowe's back. And the free kick to the Saints centre half forward. Stuart Lowe, who missed the last game of the season, then had the bye last week. He's had a two week rest. Lockett. Almost a one hander. A whistle. It's against Lockett. Free yes. kick to Perth. Yeah, the left hand came over the top of the shoulder. Gary Perth did the right thing, taking the front position and pulled the first, first free kick for the afternoon. Well, that'll be a great clash. The best full back in the competition, possibly Gary Perth playing against the equal best full forward. I think we'd agree Lockett and Dunstall will be pretty even. There's the kick way out towards centre wing. Scott Russell couldn't take the mark. Jason Daniels tries to soccer it off the ground. Players in very, very hard. Vitovic off the ground to the half forward line as the ball rolls to the line and in fact over at half forward for the Saints. And Russell Morris, who was named a centre half back, is playing as a second centre half forward for St Kilda. He's been picked up by Mick Gaffer. Monkhorst and Vitovic. Ball underfoot. Newport grabs it. Collingwood free kick. And it's quickly taken by Fraser. Away to Francis. A good hand pass to McGuan. One of the Brownlow favourites. He's had a superb season, Mick McGuan. His kick is low to half forward. McEwen can't take the mark. Crawley with the crumbs. In with his hand pass to Grant. Grant comes across the ground. Morris climbs up. Can't mark. It's tough in there. No whistle on the play. Winmar just breaks a tackle. It comes wide to Morris. The kick by Russell Morris to centre half forward low. Well, that's the value of having Morris here on the ground, the big ground, Waverley Park. Centre half forward often gets sucked down to the wing and he spins around and kicks it to no man's land. Now, there we saw Morris acting as the first centre half forward, spinning around and kicking it to the true centre half forward position where Lowe took a good mark. Stuart Lowe from 51 metres. Hooked it. Fell well short. Montcourse takes it. Touched off the boot. He goes with the hand pass to Pert. Chance for St Kilda here. Good tackle by Dwyer. That comes back to Pert. The ball out of bounds in the forward pocket. And Kim Sheldon wouldn't like that. There's Lee Matthews and Craig Kelly, who's had that new reconstruction. He wouldn't like that, Kim Sheldon, that marked Moncourse uncontested on that secure the forward line. Well, there's Tony Francis, belts it back in the towards play. Tony Shaw crashes his way through the pack. Tony Francis again, socket off the ground by Winmark, grabbed by Prisiska towards the centre of the ground. The race is on for the ball. Who will the bounce favour? Over the back is Devonport. Tackle. Loses in the tackle. Pekin. Well done to Vidovic. Vidovic. He's got a running player in Jason Daniels. Daniels. Oh, ordinary kick by Daniels. And it's locked in here at half forward for St Kilda. But really, that was a poor kick, Jared. Yes, could have done better with that. I just noticed Tony Shaw has been given the job on Nicky Winmar. As one of the St Kilda. Collingwood players. Mick McGuan goes to ground. And he gets the free kick. Bowie and McAdam on the bench for St Kilda. The hand pass comes out to the running Francis. He was under a cloud during the week with a virus, but proved his fitness. Took it a long way before a bounce then. High to full forward. Grant in front. Now, Gavin Brown might be a doubt for Collingwood. He's just about got every injury in the medical book. Good pass up the ground from Grant to Vitovic. Winmar on the run. Beautiful pass. Now, here's been a surprise. Dale Kickett's played every game since we, he was recruited for round three. Winmar kept going and has it 60 metres from goal. Yes, his pace will worry Tony yeah. Shaw. Not sure about this uh, positional move from Matthews. We'll have to give it a bit of time, obviously. But Gavin Brown playing in the forward line, a full forward for Collingwood. And that is due to his injury situation. He wouldn't have the capacity to run out a game on the wing or in a mobile position. Not a bad move from Matthews. The other option, I guess, would be just to place him as a tagger. Winmar has chipped it in short to Steve Newport. Now there's plenty of space for a lead here. The Collingwood backmen are playing three on two on Lockett and Lowe. Look at that for marking power in the goal square. Lockett and Lowe as Steve Newport lobs it into the square. Here they come. The pack develops. It hits the ground. They race in after it. Here's Bowie. Gets it back to trying to get it to Lockett in fact. Lockett went in hard on Montforce and a free kick he's given away for in the back. Play down behind play there Peter for Collingwood. Pert I think. An advantage has been paid as it comes from Woods out to Tony Shaw. Shaw to the centre wing area. It's thumped down by Sean Ralph Smith. Brad Rowe after it. Close to the boundary line. Former Brisbane Bears player. Still going with it. Great play by Bradley Rowe as he brings it down to the half forward line. 
Ronnie McEwen took front position. David Grant at the back. Well played by Grant. And he gives it to Sean Ralph Smith. Ralph Smith with the hand pass away. Harvey and McLaughlin's one of the highlight matchups of the game. Ralph Smith beats one, beats another. His left footer up towards centre wing. Winmar! Oh, he almost took a speck. He's given away the free kick. Well, he went up too early, but he hung there for a week and nearly held it. Well, here's the big replay. And look at that hanger. Well, if he had have taken the grab, I'm sure it would have been paid. I agree with you, Jared. I think the umpire had a good look and waited to see if he held it. Here's Tony Shaw. In towards the half forward line, Ronnie McEwen. Punched away by Grant. Doing the roving is Scott Russell. He tries to hook it back to the pocket, but the Collingwood player slipped over and Sean Ralph Smith takes it. Across he goes to Vitovic. Vitovic plays on. He's a greatly improved player. Oh, he tried a fancy uh, bounce. Onto the running, Robert Harvey. Harvey to the half forward line. Oh, a diving attempt out there by Pekin. Not taken. Here's Christian. A wide hand pass. He found the running, Scott Russell. We've had no score as yet. The hand pass over the top to Stasevic, just inside the boundary line. Now inside 50, Devonport in front of Rowe. Lifting situation here, Drew. Newport for St Kilda is attempting to pick up McGuan, but McGuan has changed the tables and he's going to pick up Harvey. So at the present time, it's St Kilda with two men on McGuan, leaving Tony Francis free as a rover. Stasevic gets it to McEwen. Down goes McGuan. Umpire will have to ball it up again. And Ken Sheldon will have to react fairly quickly to this because Francis, if he's left alone, will chop St Kilda up fairly quickly. He's a dangerous player and give him five minutes of free space. A couple of goals can result. Vidovic with the left hand. Gets it down to Ralph Smith. Dacox close to the boundary line. Shuffles it back to Francis. Caught with the ball. Gets in a hand pass to Russell. And St Kilda try and get it away for Robert. Oh, it's a free Vivek. kick paid to Collingwood. And a 50-metre penalty, which will be taken in the goal square. Yes, that was against Harvey, the St Kilda, who kicked it away. He thought St Kilda had the advantage. And it is one of the problems with this rule. As we see on replay here, Francis taken too high. Gets the handball out to Russell. And there's the Harvey kick that draws the 50-metre penalty. 50-metre penalty, far too harsh. Players, well, if that had been St Kilda getting the kick, it would have been advantage. A goal to Francis. So the first score of the game goes to the Magpies with the aid of 50-metre penalty, goal to Tony Francis. First score taking seven minutes. Moncourst in the middle. Winmar straight through to Dwyer. The kick by Dwyer for Lockett. Pert takes it off the hands. The two number fours playing on each other. Gary Pert, first season for Collingwood. Played every game this year. Burke in front. He's grabbed by Richardson. Interesting decision that. The umpire calls for the boundary throwing. Well, Tony Francis has had five possessions, and still we see Newport attempting to pick up McGuan. McGuan picking up Harvey. Vitovic wins the tap. Francisca goes off the ground. Newport to Dwyer. Blind hand pass. Throw. Knew Harvey was there. Harvey just outside 50. Low in the pocket. And Michael Christian's played the last couple of weeks in the reserves. He's had an injury-interrupted season, and so far, Stuart Lowe has given him a bit of a runaround. Stewie Lowe looking for the Saints' first goal. And looking to put that mark on the ground to line up with too, Drew. Taken two marks already. Coming up for his third kick. Distance, 35 metres. Not much to shoot at, though. Not a bad effort. Pretty close for a point. Well, he did get close to the big man. He's finally fit after a shoulder injury. And Gary Pert, a big job for him on Tony Lockett. He's done well so far. He's been with Lockett on the leads, and Pert, characteristic kick right out to the half back line, tapped on by Daniels. He's kicking. Who's bundled over the line by Monkhorst? It's David and Goliath there. And uh, there's big Damien Monkhorst, who's a greatly improved player. Well, Ken Sheldon has conceded a minor victory in the tactical battle. 
has instructed Newport now to pick up Francis. So all square now on the ball. Shaw to the centre wing, Pekin. And took his time picking it up, finally gets his boot to it. With Brad Rowe. Now, was he in control of the ball? Umpire said yes, so he called play on. Good umpiring by Brian Sheehan. And eventually the ball forced over the line on centre wing. Lehman and McCartney on the bench for Collingwood. And McAdam and Bowie for St Kilda. Vitovic to the back. Overrun by Ral Smith. But he goes in and has a second dip at it. And gets a free kick. Well played. And he's been fairly prominent early. Fifth possession. The kick short of half forward. Punch to the front. Another whistle. Another St Kilda free. To low. He's proving a problem for Christian. Lockett staying way back near the goal square. It'll take a long kick from Lowe. He's got a chance, big Tony. One hand. Strong. Well, he certainly played Gary Pert on a break for strength, but the kick was terrific on that occasion. It put it out in front of Lockett, and we see him now with the front position. Uses oh. a legal tactic, just holds Pert out, and with the good skills he's got with the left hand, just encapsulates that ball and away he goes. Tony Lockett didn't play against Collingwood when they met for the only time this season. Saints still won. Lining up from 45 metres. Away to the left. This season he's kicked 123 goals, 55. Well, it's interesting, that marking duel where he, Lockett held Pert off in the head with the left hand. Well, you know, the question is... I thought it was just know, under the uh, chin, Pert. Oh, it was very high as we see Pert to the half-back line. Monkhorst, great mark. Now, Damien Monkhorst from half-back gives it to Mickey McGuan, who covers a lot of territory. McGuan to the half-forward line, players race at the ball. It was Denny Foley leading the race. Socket off the ground. Brad Rowe. Now Francis. Ooh, he's hit hard. And by Nicky Winner. But he got Francis in the head. I feel it'll be a free kick to Tony Francis back at half forward. Now, Fran Let's have a look at it. Yes, well, Francis is playing the ball. Winmar comes across, collects him high. A reasonable free kick. Now, let's have a look at it again. Uh, he had the head down and the hip really got him with the half forward line. Is that a push in the back? No. As Devonport tries to keep it in play, but he's put it out on the full. Oh, look who's, I think Dacos, if he gets this, or will it be Tony Francis? So Kilda ought to pray it's not Dacos from out there. No, it's Francis to take it. Francis from 65 metres. The Magpies in dangerous. Or a short one in towards the pocket, and Gavin Brown leads and marks. Brown, the Collingwood champ, he's chipping it in short as well. Dacos! So good play by Brown. Dacos, well, you're nearly backing from here, Jared. Yes, he's an exceptional shot at goal. Has been down, has been the object of a lot of controversy and a lot of discussion about his form, Peter Dacos, since about uh, five weeks ago and uh, he really does need to get a couple of goals on the board early Shanahan now picking him up he started with Frawley here's the kick Peter Dacos kicks and I think he's drifted this to the right he has unlike the Collingwood champ the miss from there although it was an acute angle well the phone in the St Kilda coaches box Ken Sheldon's phone doesn't work so at the moment the runner you can see him puffing there He's had to go out on the ground, run up into the grandstand <laughs> to get the message and take it back out in the field. He'll cover some miles today. At centre half back, it's a free kick to Vitavi. Slides it away to Harvey. Oh, he beats an attempted trip there by Monkhorst. Blokes have been suspended for that uh, earlier this season. Harvey goes for a run. Just picks out a man, Newport. Newport across the ground to Burke. He's got some space now. Nathan Burke across the ground to Lockett. He got underneath the ball. Right, there was some doubt about him. Right, taking it all the way back and giving away a score. A good play from Graham Wright to concede that point. Has started the game with a stress fracture, we believe, in the foot. He's playing in the back pocket, which is a good move from Collingwood. 
giving the Pies plenty of run and speed in that last line of defence. Another great kick in by Pert to Moncourse, who took front position. He was held by Daniels. Now he's got uh, Tony Shaw running wide. Onto the pacing Fraser. Mark Fraser brings it in towards half on Ronnie McEwen. Great mark. Now McEwen's a very long kick of a ball. He brings it in towards the pocket. Dacos is on the lead. Dacos can't get there. It was a poor kick by McEwen. And that silly play that by Shanahan over the boundary line. Umpires take a dim view of that at times. There was a rule a couple of years ago that if you touch the ball after it went over the boundary line, it was a free kick. Perhaps they've forgotten about that one. Chance for Collingwood here. Stasevich back towards the boundary line and back out. I tell you what, the ground's in remarkable condition. They had the Super Sopper out earlier in the week. Right. 40% uh, of the car park is closed to cars today because of the rain we've had here during the week. We had rain about an hour before the game, and now it's bright, sunny, and the ground in good nick. Free kick to Vitovic. Amazing scoreline. We've had just one goal, and we're past the midway mark of the turn. And now a free kick at centre half back to Grant. All Australian last year, David Grant, but was dropped this season. Christian failed to punch it away. St Kilda free kick once again to low. And Michael Christian really has his hands full. Well, he's playing from behind, and uh, it's hard to play low from behind as we see. Well, what's happening here? It has to be given back to Lowe. It's his third free kick for the afternoon, Stewie Lowe, so he's obviously a favourite with the umpires. Well, he's chipping it in short, and he's found Stephen Newport, the former Melbourne utility player. Newport at the moment picking up Tony Francis. Now, they're too slow getting it to their forward line at the moment. The Saints, as he brings it in towards half what Russell Morris flies, comes down to Lowe. Lowe hooks it back, lock it at the back. But there are three Collingwood players there, and Gary Pert. And that's the reason why... St Kilda have to bring the ball in quickly because it doesn't allow Monkhurst to drop back on Tony Lockett as we saw happen on that occasion. Now here's Brad Rowe, he's a, a real live line. Over to McGuan. The Magpies are off and running. Mickey McGuan, will he have another bounce? He will. He's trying to get onto the left foot and bring it into the bucket. Dacos waits for the bounce. Gets a cruel bounce. Still going on with the Dacos. Brown's there to lend a hand. Taps it up to Dacos. Dacos trying to get around and give it to Christian. Christian chips it in short. Down Free kick over the shoulder, play on advantage play. Brett Rowe with an open goal, what's he done? He's missed. Oh, boy, he's just an absolute sinner. Yes, coaches hang their heads when that happens. All the hard work of Gavin Brown winning that ball on the half forward line to see a wasted opportunity go begging here. Francis draws the free kick. McGuan with the ball now lays it off, and Brad Rowe. Misses what he certainly should have kicked. Frawley kicks in for Pekin. Free kick will mark. Pekin, handball in. Harvey on the run. This is what he's done all year. He's had a superb season, Robert Harvey. Grant. Straight up the centre of the ground. Lowe working to the back. He's got a chance here, Stewie Lowe. He's dashed away from Christian again. Bang for goal. Just off line, hit the post. So Lowe has kicked two behinds, one, two to four behinds. This is why they play close well, games. Neither of them can score enough to uh, open up a margin. Well, there's no doubt in my mind that uh, the wind is not favouring the right of screen. Those kicks are all holding up going to right of screen at the moment as we see grabbing at Richardson. Off he goes. Loose Collingwood players everywhere. Michael Christian. Chips are always chipped it in short looking for Stasevic. Stasevic, too much pace for Ralph Smith. Back to Christian. Collingwood with plenty of backup support. Here's Mick McGuire. Craig Stasevich again will chip it in towards half on Roddy McEwen. Now, this will be interesting. McEwen is a very long kick. He'll just about make the distance from here. Although he's got a kick about 53, if he has a long bomb, oh, he's gone the torpedo punt instead of the drop punt. That is dreadful by Roddy McEwen. He, he can kick a drop punt 55 or 60. Well, it obviously is a more percentage kick to drop punt, and that's why we don't see many torpedoes. Players of the calibre of Dacos have carte blanche to use that. Not many can hit it effectively, particularly with finals pressure. McEwen lets the ball get behind him. Grant having a fine game. Pekin steers the ball towards the middle. Well, kick it, waited for it, and Wright almost took it away, took it away from him. It comes to Krasiska, slips a high tackle, puts it out towards the wing. Fraser, quickest man in the Collingwood unit. 
Puts the hand pass over the top. This is promising. McEwen from 55 metres. Brown! Dacos with a chance. Opens up the angle, but the kick is beautifully smothered by Shanahan. Jamie Shanahan, Tasmanian, in his first season in the AFL. Great stuff. Yes, that was a great smother. Russell Morris goes to ground. Oh, it's hard in the clinches. Tony Shaw pops it high. Free kick the lead. That's a little Collingwood captain. He's way out at half forward. Collingwood have been messing around with some uh, short chip kicks instead of bombing it in long. He brings it into the pocket. Dacos. Play on the umpire calls. Now Brown. Trying to get it back to the dangerous Dacos. Dacos in the back. Oh, he could have received a free kick and eventually Devonport taps it through from behind. I thought Dacos cut that one. Yes, it looked like it could have been an in-the-back decision there, Peter. And here's the replay as we see Sean Ralph Smith. Very crude attempt there. That was a free kick. But you will see Collingwood chipping the ball around because they've picked a fairly mobile shortish team. They haven't got the big guns up forward to kick the ball long, expecting to take the big mark. The punch forward goes to Devonport. The free kicks are 12 to 8 in favour of Collingwood. And the only goal of the game came from a 50 metre. Daniels across the ground. Shaw from behind. How did he get up to spoil that? Win Marfus and Kilda. This is good run from the Saints now. Peek and charge straight at right. He's holding the ball, surely. No whistle. Listen to the Collingwood fans. Kick it. Comes up in the direction of Lowe. Christian, spo Christian spoils this time. Comes back to Stewie Lowe, off the left boot, lock it. But it beats him out of bounds in the pocket. Yes, I thought Lowe could have handled that, handballed that one off to kick it. He was running in a straight line with the goals. Lowe had to swing around and kick around the corner with his left foot. Forward pocket for the Saints, Lowe again. Oh, he's caught high. No free kick. And eventually the ball hits the behind post. I think initially that tackle was around the chest, but then low going up. to ground. Exactly. Well, it looks like the phone is back in action. Kenny Sheldon will be pleased about that, but more particularly the runner. Russell Morris plays for the free kick and gets it for holding the man. So, a free kick to Russell Morris, almost directly in front. Was he in possession of the ball? And the umpire said no. Free kick to Russell Morris. Well, here is the replay. Morris, you see there, just stage for that free kick. Perhaps could have been construed as a little bit high, but I thought a little bit uh, of an easy one. Morris coming in for only his second kick of the afternoon. Well, Collingwood have had most of the play. A chance for the Saints to hit the front, in fact, by a point if he kicks this. Russell Morris stabs. Oh, did he sneak it in? Yes, he did. So, a bit of aggro going on. But the Saints lead by appointment. Collingwood have had most of the play. Yes, yeah, a bit of aggro between Chrisiska and Russell Morris. Didn't look all that confident coming towards goal, Morris, but he did convert, and that's all that counts. There's Morris just dropping his knees and going to ground. Gayford took him a little bit high, then fell into his back, but a pretty soft free kick. What a scoreline. Five and a half minutes to quarter time. 1-4 to 1-3. Montcourt's hand pass intercepted by Harvey. Morris grabbed by Gaffer. No whistle this time. Lowe. He's had ten possessions at centre-half forward, Stewie Lowe. Kick it. Morris covered ground to get there. Terrific play by Woods. His hand pass is great for Wright. They've got speed across the centre, Collingwood. Right short passes to Monkhorst, who's covered about 80 metres. Off to Russell. This should be a goal. Fantastic goal by the Pies. 2-3 to 1-4. And fantastic running by Scott Russell. Here's right on screen. There you see Russell driving down with the legs going down from the half-back flank. Finally gets the ball from Monkhurst. And a terrific kick on the run from 40 metres out. Scott Russell gets his first goal for the afternoon. He's being tagged by Pekin for St Kilda. The Magpies by five points. Vitovic with the left hand. Scott Russell comes through the centre. Grabbed by Robert Harvey. Mick Dwyer. 
trying to trap it. Center of the ground. Hooks it back. Looking for Harvey again. Still McDwyer. Gets it to... Well, Harvey was here and also Bowie is on the ground. Jason Daniels should be looking for his big forwards. There's the kick. Lock it in front. Pert at the back. He gets it to ground, Gary Pert. Here's Tony Woods. Still held after he got rid of the ball. Chance now for Fletcher. A wild hand pass. Gary Pert comes out of defence and puts it long with a raking kick to centre wing. Peaton. Quick hand pass. Harvey's come right into this game. Harvey back to uh, Nathan Burke. The ball hits the deck. And a free kick for holding the man will go to Scott Russell at half back. Scotty Russell scored the last goal of the game. Four minutes remaining to quarter time. Centre wing, Monkhorst. Doing a fine job. Four marks. Up towards half forward. Gee, that was tough for Fraser. And Ralph Smith approached the ball and took the mark low down. Goes for the hand pass to Daniels. Back to Ralph Smith. Cornered by Stasevich. Wide he comes to Pekin. Perhaps should have taken the mark once he got to the front. Russell. Uh, Francis, great scoop off the ground. Richardson, back to Francis. This is Collingwood's strength, their run. Kick by Francis. Chopped away from Dacos by Devonport. And now St Kilda can rebound. Nicky Winmar on the run. And maybe their running won't suffer by comparison. Oh. Sweeping hand pass by Vidovic. Put pressure on Dwyer. Right's quick. Dwyer had to get the ball out in front. Right gets him. Holding the man. Free kick to St Kilda. A bit of a handball was the wrong option. Yes, the wrong option. It was probably a poor call as well. Vitovic should have uh, come up the centre of the ground, coming up the corridor with a kick. To wire into a locket. Free kick. Free kick. Another free kick given away by Lockett in the back. Well, they're crowding Lockett out at the present time. He's obviously becoming a little bit frustrated. Good tactics from the Collingwood defenders, dropping the big men back on Lockett. Oh, they've got but to get the ball down there quicker, don't they, to get him exactly, one out. Exactly, Peter. Get it down. Move it quickly. Gary Perda, wobbly one to the half-back line. Is Robert Harvey. He's talented. Fraser gets it to Scott Russell around the corner. Bowie back with the flight of the ball. Had to show some... Uh, uh, how will the umpire see that? He's, uh, Bowie thinks it's 50. Well, he could have played on. And it's not 50, so it's got to come back. He's got to go back behind the mark. So well, the umpire's called time on now, so he's a uh, right. delayed play. He's got a loose man over there in Devonport. Devonport should be looking for the long kick in towards his forwards. He is. Low at the back. Stewie Low. One-handed attempt. Couldn't take it. Woods. Quick hand pass. Montfort's doing well. On to Shaw. And Tony Shaw will belt Collingwood out of defence. He kicks to no man's land. And finds the boundary line about 45 metres upfield. Yes, so well, Tim Peakin has now been shifted on to Tony Francis. Boundary throw in centre wing. A minute and a half to go to quarter time. Monkhorst doing exceptionally well. Umpire calls for it. Peter Carey and will ball it up. Newport has left the ground, allowing Bowie on. McAdam hasn't seen any action yet. 2 3 to 1 4. Shaw, first back after this one. Bit of a fumble. Slaps it out. Chance for Burke. Goes off the ground. Fumble by Gary. Oh. Flies paid. Kicking in danger there. Interesting decision. Ball was there. I didn't see too many hands on it. Free kick to Woods. Stasevich at the back. Tries to work Ralph Smith under the ball. Devonport taken by Rowe. Out of bounds. Throw in. On centre wing. Five points to the margin. The Magpies led very even first term. Both back lines on top. There's no doubt about that. Bowie. Oh, Vitovic almost to throw. Gets it to Harvey, who's starting to clock up a few positions. Robert Ten. Harvey. Ten, in fact. Well, Woods receives from Monkhorst. In towards half forward. Oh, the man who really went hard at that was Daniels. Daniels hooks it around the corner. Two uh, St Kilda players waited for it. Harvey. And how the umpires see that? Daniels again. Bowie. Here's their chance, the Saints. Lock it at low. Low should mark. And lock it. Good play by Lockett. Excellent play with the Shepherd. He did Shepherd well on Christian. Lowe must convert this one. He has had a pretty good quarter with eight possessions from centre-half forward. And here's the mark. You'll see 
block had come across Christian's path there. I think it probably helped him in, in the end, but it was uh, the thought that counted. Lockett must goal after the siren. Well, Sorry. This is low. Stuart Lowe, should say. To put the Saints a point in front of he kicks his goal. Stewie Lowe stabs. Will it sneak in? I think it's over the line for a goal. Yes. The Saints, a quarter time. They lead by a point as we see the score. Two goals, four. 16, St Kilda. Collingwood, 2 3, a total of 15. to start the all-important second quarter here at AFL Park. St Kilda lead the Magpies by a point. Tony Shaw goes to ground, then taps it on. Now the umpire will come in and bounce. Interesting that they started Jared with young McCartney, probably because of lack of finals experience, starting him on the bench. Yeah, just letting him settle down. I'm sure that's the reason why Rocker missed out also. They didn't want to be relying on two 18-year-olds in key positions. Bounce again. That was Vitovic with the left hand getting it to bounce. Socket off the ground by Robert Harvey, who's now got a sleeveless gurn to his Bowie. Gets it to Daniels. Now they've got the two big fellas to kick it to. Lock it. Lock it. And Gary Pert. Lock it. Caught a mile behind. And Gary Pert races away and kicks a booming kick to centre wing. The ball will hit the deck. Scott Russell caught high. That guy says no. Fraser. Oh, smothered beautifully. That was well played. Craig Devonport. He gets it on the Bowie. Hit by Bowie. Up towards the 50. McAdam just on the ground. Can't take the mark. Gafer whips it off him. Back to Woods. Out towards centre wing. Here's McGuan on the gallop. Beautiful kick to Russell at half forward unmarked. Devonport had found trouble getting back. Russell goes for the uh, goal square. A poor kick from Russell. Dacos has to have the ball delivered out in front. He's kicked it as if he had Lockett in the square. Kicked it long, expecting the big grab. Well, Dacos has never taken overhead mark in his life. Ralph well, Smith took it after the mark of Shanahan, and now at centre-half back is Daniels. A couple of times his disposal has let him down. A couple of times today, a couple of hundred times in his career. Low. Umpire's going to ball this up. Christian still has the task. Ooh, that was a, almost a free kick to Stewie Lowe again. Mm. It's good to see McAdam on the ground. I think a number of times in the first quarter, St Kilda did lack someone with creative skills at the feet of uh, both Lockett and Lowe. That was Tony Shaw having the ball smothered. It ends up with Richardson. Richardson to half forward, Gavin Brown. Brown way out at half forward, a long way to the goals. Ronnie McEwen leading now. McEwen versus Frawley. Frawley, uh, McEwen, no. Oh. Just got into his back. What do you think, Jared? Oh, I thought it staged. My immediate thought was a uh, bit of an act there, Peter. Let's and we'll see on the replay. Let's There's no doubt he's got his hand oh, there. Hand on the neck, and then. Oh, but there was hardly the shove to uh, push a 16 stone man to the ground, Pete. What do you think? Well, Ronnie McEwen's got the kick, nevertheless, from 35 metres almost directly in front. As he kicks, he's a beautiful kick. He's put it through for a goal. points and that's all that counts the scoreboard McEwen picks up the free kick and we'll have another look at this Frawley just allows his hand to ride up and he probably leaves the umpire no decision but toward that free kick I thought it was a little bit uh, easy but McEwen makes him suffer with a goal Gee, McEwen really did take a dive. It was like excavating Ayers Rock with a shovel. <laughs> umpire will have to ball this up again. That's a big shovel, Drew. Francis and Winmar having a bit of a dip at each other. Tony Shaw with a job on Nicky Winmar. Monkhorst will take a free kick. Well, Monkhorst and Vitovic having a pretty good battle. Monkhurst with eight possessions, Vitovic with seven. Rowe in front, good mark, hits the ground running, gets away from Devonport. The kick inside the 50. Stasevich comes to the back to Dacos, threads it up to McGuan. Chance for the pies here, Mick McGuan across the face of goal, out of bounds and on the full. Good pressure from Harvey there on McGuan. Came at him at a million miles an hour, forcing McGuan to quick 
kick quickly. And as you saw the result out on the full. Denny Frawley, the evergreen fullback, 28 years of age. He hasn't played too many poor games for the Saints. There's a good mark by Vitovic. Vitovic at half back. Brings it to the centre of the ground. Russell Morris, that's a push in the back. And now fire onto that one. He was underneath it. He didn't need to be pushed either. No, he dropped the ball before the uh, hands came on the back. That's dead right as we see Morris. Low! Couldn't hold it. But, oh, big leap from the big man. Tony Shaw, a clever little hand pass out to Francis. Now it's Damien Moncourse. Oh, breaks the tackle easily. Good play by Big Moncourse. To the half forward line, it's a loose ball. Well, Sean Ralph Smith went without it. Now he's got it. Taps it on. Tim Pekin over the top. And he's found Robert Harvey. He goes across the half back line to Devonport. Now St Kilda with a bit of run. Daniels in the centre circle. He goes up towards the 50 metre line. McAdam doubles back, jumps into his man. No whistle for that. Low shuffles the ball out. Bowie goes back to Winmar. On the wide lead is Lockett. Couldn't quite get there. Perth picks up the crumbs. Perth's won the duel easily. Centre wing Monkhorst. Team possessions to Big Monkey. Shaw with courage. Took one high. Gets the hand pass back to Richardson. Floats one over the top to right. This man's got a stress fracture of the foot. Look at him go. Graham Wright. Poor disposal, though. And Grant takes the mark. Well, speaking of poor disposal, St Kilda are letting themselves down by their delivery to Lockett. He's making space. He's getting himself one out. But they're not kicking the ball to his advantage. And they're not getting the score on the board. And look at the skill of Harvey. Eventually it was smothered. But the way he balked and turned in now. The dangerous Francis. Pace. Touches it on the ground. On the Maguire. McGuan chips it in short. Was meant for McEwen. Well trapped by big Ronnie McEwen too. Back it comes to McGuan. He's bundled over the line and the ball tapped in towards his feet. But Danny Forley tried to claim uh, holding the ball there, but the umpire sensibly umpire Brian Sham will bounce. And there's Peter Hudson and Kenny Sheldon to be on Peter Hudson, the former great Hawthorne full forward, of course. And Ken Sheldon played in three premiership teams for Carlton. Pies by five points. Ball back out of bounds. When was the earliest ever prediction of a draw given in a game? <laughs> Halfway through the second quarter? Because it's three goals to two. These two teams are absolutely cherry ripe to be dead level at the end. Devon Port, the fumble was costly. Oh, the umpire said give it a mail, ball it up. And Drew, if it did happen to be a draw, the additional time would be played consisting of two five-minute halves with time on added. And if they were still a draw, they'd play another uh, two five-minute halves. The ball in that forward pocket for the Magpies. The little scoreboard there showing five points the margin. 3-3 three, three to 2 for A typical finals game, Jarrett. Yes, well, there's no prizes for second today. For the loser, it's mothballs. For the winner, they get a chance. He's going Craig, to take the premiership. Craig Devonport to the centre of the ground. Morris knocked it on, but Moncourt's playing very, very well. Gets it to Shaw. Tony Shaw, here's a big chance for the Magpies because Craig Starsevich is marked 40 metres from goal directly in front. Well, another costly turnover to St Kilda. Wild kick out of the back line. Moncourt wins it well here. Barges his way through McAdam. Tony Shaw having a bit of an influence now. Pretty lucky kick there. Starsevich just in the right place at the right time. Starsevich from directly in front. This is close. And Craig Starsevich's goal. So the Magpies kick away. 4-3 to St Kilda, 2-4. Good conversion from Starsevich from about 40 metres out. But Monkhurst was the one responsible for this goal. He won the ball well, gave it to the captain. Starsevich bobs up and here's a good shot from behind the goal you saw him run straight through to the center of the goals and that's where the ball finished twenty seven playing sixteen biggest break so far to Collingwood Harvey toes it off the ground Vitovic gets the hell free kick it's coming back to Collingwood to Gavin Brown just as the Saints were off and running kick by Brown to center half forward Starsevich again Second mark in a minute. This is out the hand pass. McGuan, 45 metres from goal. Speed by Fraser. Breaks the tackle. Over the top to Brad Rowe. And Rowe has kicked it. Two goals in a minute to 
Jack Collingwood. And when Stasevic marks right in front, 40 metres out, this is what happens. Yes, you'll see Brad Rowe end up on the end of this one. I think he may just be a little bit too quick for Craig Devonport. Here's another speech to Fraser who edges it over. Next Brisbane Bears player converts. Gavin Brown's been shifted out to centre half forward. And he was the one that started that onslaught for Collingwood. Brown being picked up by Grant for St Kilda. The Magpies by 17 points. Crisis time for the Saints. Bowie. They have to have Lockett firing down there. Here's Krasiska. Well, they've got runners everywhere. Collingwood, Tony Shaw. To the wide open spaces. Here's two good ball. Great play by Harvey. Tremendous use of the body on McGuan then. Harvey centres the ball. Vitovic. Oh, courage shown by Vitovic. Oh, he gave it to Nathan Burke, who was covered. They're going to get away with it, though, the Saints. Bowie. On the Vitovic. Brings it in towards oh, a it. shocking kick by Vitovic. It was intended for Lockett, but they can't afford that with your forwards. Here's Tony Woods. Back towards Gafer. Oh, well smothered Mick Dwyer. Dwyer from the boundary line brings it back. Oh, great attempt, but he has missed the behind only to the Saints. One other example, Peter, of poor kicking to Lockett. Lazar Video Vic, as the St Kilda supporters call him. Fairly ordinary kick. Pert had the front position and certainly wasn't to Lockett's advantage. He was five metres behind. And Gary Pert's had a superb game. And when he kicks in, it looks as though he's got a gale behind him every time. On course, another mark. He's taken five of them. Here goes right after the hand pass. Short pass to Brown at centre wing. The extra speed and mobility of Collingwood is really telling in this uh, early part of the second quarter. St Kilda may have to shuffle their side around a little bit. Gavin Brown's kick. Ralph Smith in front of Stasevich that time. At ground level, Daniels. Ball held to him and the umpire will ball it up. Nathan Burke there on the ground. He's played all 22 games this year. Man in the head guard. It's at half forward for the Magpies. They certainly look the quicker side. Scott Russell to half forward. Brown versus Grant. And a free kick down to Brown. The holding decision against David Grant. Now, Gavin Brown can chip it in short. The lead is on McEwen and Frawley. Frawley read it very, very well. Good mark. So, Denny Frawley on to Devonport. Oh, this could be dangerous. He's been forced to cross goal. Shocking play, that. This will cost him a goal. They cross on the left foot. Hooks it back, and Luck's a fortune. That was never on that kick by Devonport. Uh, his kicking disposals often leave a bit to be desired. On that occasion, it was all, all one born out of pressure. He's running across goal and kicked it blindly and almost cost him a goal. Here's Rowe going away from goal. Wide for Dacos, within goal-scoring distance. Short pass, didn't go 10 metres. Rowe Great can't tackle. break the tackle. Ralph Smith in after the ball, and the Saints will clear. He goes across the half-back line. Winmar with pace, back from the centre of the ground. Well played by Nicky Winmar. Shaw still made it a contest, though. He's taken out Tony Shaw in a boundary throw. Well, they reckon he couldn't kick. He was too slow. And for a long time, he played in the shadow of his brother, Ray Shaw, but he's been a superb captain. Scott Russell with a quick hand pass to the half-forward line. Robert Harvey looking for Devonport, it's locked in there and it'll be a bounce by umpire Brian Sheehan about 20 metres out from the Collingwood goal. Great battle between Harvey and McGuan, two of the stars of the competition, both will be vying for all Australian selection as Ruck Rovers and it's terrific when stars line up on each other and battle it out rather than being tagged. Vitovic back towards the boundary line and over the line it goes at half forward, the small scoreboard showing the Magpies on top 5-3 to 2-5 Tim Pekin on the right, Alan Richardson on the left. Again, it comes down to Brad Rowe. Brad Rowe up Frawley and McEwen. Now, was that a push out? And that guy said it was. So, one apiece. One apiece. Frawley on to Robert Harvey. He's got to be go back and kick over the mark here, Denny Frawley. St Gilda skipper just clears McEwen. 
Outside the 50. Vitovic can't take the mark. Rowe taps on. Shaw taps on. But Harvey's there again. What a game he's playing, Robert Harvey. The hand pass outside the 50 to Pekin. Pekin off the left, over the centre circle. Kick it's been quiet, but takes the mark low to the ground. Saints desperately in need of a goal. Lockett's taken one mark and had one kick. Kick it goes wide to Winmar. They're in trouble at centre field. Long kick by Winmar. Goes over Lockett at the back low. He's played a great game, hasn't he, Jerry? Yes, he's been the most dominant forward on the ground so far. A vital goal just before quarter time. Kept St Kilda within touch. And once again, he'll be relied upon to convert to get St Kilda back into this game. And there's the replay from behind the goals. Christian just a yard behind. That's all a good player needs. The big hands of Bucket Slow takes the mark. That was his fourth mark. And with his ninth kick, he's kicked an important goal. Yes, and a tragedy here for St Kilda. Danny Frawley coming off the ground with what looks to be a leg injury. Fletcher going back on for the Saints. There's the skipper going to the huddle. He'll probably go straight up the race to get some treatment. St Kilda certainly needed that goal from low. Danny Frawley is off the ground with a leg injury. Bad news that for the Saints. And Russell Morris has gone to full back. Now, the ball on the ground. A quick hand pass comes over to kick it. Kick it, not sure what to do with it. Harvey went without it. Kick it again. Shuffles it out to Daniels. Now, who will it sit for him? Daniels, he's trying to pick it up. Now he's got it. Caught with the ball. Gets it to oh, Look at the skill of Harvey. Breaks the tackle. Harvey in the locket. Here he comes. And he finally marks in front of Gary Kirk. 40 metres from goal. Well, finally, Tony Lockett gets one a shot of goal from his main source of goals, and that's Robert Harvey. Harvey did a beautiful sidestep around McGuan and then delivered it to the advantage of Lockett. He can run onto this one. To make the difference four points, and you give the man a rap, and he kicks a shot. Two from behind, a bad miss by the big full forward. So Tony Lockett still yet to score a goal. Now to Ross Glendinning, what about Danny Frawley? Yes, Drew, uh, Danny's just uh, went over on his left ankle, just having it re-strapped, and he is a chance to come back on the ground. Gary Pert to kick in, you watch this. Into orbit. That is about a 65-metre kick, almost Fraser. Winmar. Well played by Nicky Winmar. Off the left boot he goes, wide for Bowie. Good run by Bowie. Still two kicks to goal from there. Oh, well, smothered by Francisca on the mark. Fraser now for Collingwood. An expensive turnover? Maybe not yet. Yes, a free oh. kick for Fraser. I think Collingwood have been a bit lucky with the free kicks this quarter. Gavin Brown's got a couple of easy ones, and I thought that one was a bit, uh, a bit suspect. And Fraser 20 to 14 in favour of Collingwood. Bowie dishes out a wide hand pass to Devonport. He tries to get around right. This is a great contest. Well done by Graham Wright. Gee, that was good. By the way, he's playing, he'd probably do better with two stress fractures. And the ball halfway between centre wing and half forward for the Saints. They trail by nine points. The kick by McGuan to half forward. The race is on. Scott Russell's very quick. He's got two to beat here. So he soccers it off the ground that beats Gavin Brown over the line at half forward for the Magpies. Well, Ken Sheldon's made a move here. They've shifted Nathan Burke onto Scott Russell. Burke initially started in a forward pocket. But his strength is taking a good runner out of the play. Finally, St Kilda have reverted to playing within their strengths. Eight and a half minutes to half time as Brad Rowe gets it to the half forward line and stumped the ground. Brad Rowe swoops on it. Brad Rowe kicks in towards goal across the face slightly and it rolls over the line and through for a behind. So he had a real chance then, the nippy little half forward. Yes, I think once again showing that he is too quick for Craig Devonport. Whether St Kilda has got another option is another question. Eight minutes to half time. Harvey, he'll have 40 possessions if he keeps this up. That's 18, and we've got eight minutes to the long break. Burke at half back. 
into Vitovic. Well, the ruck contest has been interesting. Monkhorst has had uh, 13 possessions, but Vitovic's at 13 as well. Ralph Smith up towards the 50. Woods gets back there, but Low charges at it and takes another mark. Woods could have gone a bit hard at that one. Dwyer beats a man, goes for goal. It's home. Well, Mark Dwyer finishes with an excellent goal. He's pretty handy around the goal sticks and uh, he converted what was a difficult chance, but I believe that Woods for Collingwood could have just committed himself a little bit more in front of Lowe. Could have changed the result. Back in the centre, four points the margin when Collingwood were getting right on top. The Saints have hit back hard. There's Graham Wright with a quick kick. Nathan Burke pushes in the back. And the kick will come back to Scott Russell. There's no point Burke being upset with that one. That was definitely there. The left hand gave Russell the big push out. On to Krasiska, who can kick a long way. He goes for the short one instead, towards half forward. Well done by Grant. Oh, that was great play by the Saints. On to Ralph Smith. Ralph Smith, oh, here he is again. Best man on the ground, this man. Stuart Lowe having a wonderful day. Brings it in towards half forward. It's up the ground. Where are the nippy rovers? There are none there. Eventually it was Christian. Now it's Ralph Smith. Ralph Smith caught. Gets in a hand pass. Nathan Burke trying to shuffle it out. He's brought the ground and the umpire sensibly. This is Peter Carey will come in and bounce. There's no doubt about it. If you watch Collingwood, you need a strong heart. If you watch these two teams, over a lot of years you need a strong heart. Monkhorst wins. McGuan can't get free. And the umpire will ball it up. Jason McCartney at the interchange gate, preparing to come on for his first appearance in a final. Strangely, when these two played a draw last year, it was their first draw in nearly 100 years. Christian's kick smothered. Comes to Dwyer. He hacks it out of the pack. Chance for St Kilda. Free kick. Free kick to Fletcher. I reckon it'll be Christian coming off for Collingwood. And this will be Fletcher's first kick. He's been there all along and has had just three handballs. Yes, well, Stuart Lowe has really been the thorn in the side of Collingwood getting them back into this game. Perhaps they'll use McCartney as a second option on him. Fletcher, 40 metres out. Doesn't kick that strongly. Did it get home? It did! And the Saints are in front by two points. Well, this is what finals football is all about. St Kilda fighting their way back. There's the free kick awarded against Woods on Fletcher. And from behind the goals, we see this ball just scraping in, floated a little bit through the air. He's pretty pleased with his conversion. It was Christian. There he is on screen coming off. Well, would you believe it? The Saints have hit the front by two points as the ball goes to ground. Here they come again. They'll kick it. Kicks long, he's looking for Lockett. Lockett and Pert, great play, Gary Pert, sensational play and a great mark. I think it's been Kicker that's given St Kilda the spark. He's been instrumental in a couple of their goals this quarter. Oh, Lockett, Lockett for, on the Shepherd flatten one of the Collingwood players with his hip and shoulder. Gary Pert, a huge kick, and Ralph Smith having a good quarter. He's excellent across half back. Gordon Ralph Smith, what a game we're seeing now, a typical finals encounter, a typical game between St Kilda and Collingwood. Now, is that a push-out? Umpire said no, and it is Monkhorst on the Woods. Woods off the side of the boot, Jason Daniels kept his eyes on it, good mark. Daniels having a pretty good battle with Fraser on the wing. He's had seven kicks and four handballs, kept Fraser relatively quiet. Punched out by Krasiska, Francis picks up. Gains ground. Burke leads row. Daniels. Well done by Fraser to come from behind, but he pushed his opponent. And the free kick goes to Jason Daniels. Well, Francis and Bowie having a bit of a how you do behind play. And it's no wonder Francis a little bit uh, frustrated. He started the game well, earning five possessions early. But since then, has only featured a couple of times. 
Devonport up to Pika. And back to Devonport through the middle. Kick by Devonport is good for Lockett. <laughs> Haven't seen too much of Big Plugger. That's just his third mark. He's had two kicks. Both have been behind. Well, Gary Pert won the last battle, but this time it's Big Tony. Too strong on that occasion. Good leap. And there they are at it again. Bowie and Francis. Francis has got to get himself back in touch with the football. Locker kicks his first of the day. Well, the Pies had a break, but now some killed the lead by eight points. Yeah, certainly St Kilda have taken charge of this game since about the 10-minute mark of the second quarter. Craig Devonport, he's been taken off Brad Rowe. Nathan Burke's gone onto him. Terrific kick to Tony Lockett. That's a better way of kicking the ball. Just over three minutes to half time, a vital three minutes. Who will get this ball out of the centre? The centre bounce is important. And they lock it in, and umpire Brian Sheen will bounce again. Well, Shelton has changed his tag as he's put Devonport onto Scott Russell. And Nathan Burke, a little bit quicker, has gone on to Brad Rowe. Well, the bounce again. Monkhorst wins that one. Tony Shaw couldn't get it away. I thought he had the ball. But still, the umpires paid it to Tony Shaw, centre of the ground. He goes for the torpedo putt. A good kick, too, by the little fella. To half forward over the back, Nathan Burke and David Grant. Row with the pace, though. Here's Russell Morris trying to shuffle it out. Oh, Harvey presses his way through. Good play, Harvey. And look at that. Great kick out to Bowie. Bowie off and running. He'll have a bounce. Will he go again? No, he won't. He brings it towards oh. half forward. He's a shocking kick straight to Montcourt. Damien Montcourt has taken seven marks and now has had 13 handballs. Richardson to half forward. Stasevich can't take the mark. Comes to the front. Bowie. Ralph Smith across the ground. Bit of space here for Winmar. He holds it up, Nicky Winmar. Low offering something at half forward. It goes in that direction, and why not? He's been brilliant. Punch away this time is good by Christian. Krasiska after it. Sandwich. Gafer gets the hand pass free. Wright goes for a run. This game is toing and froing. Good kick by Wright. A mark to Stasevich at half forward. Kick and a half from goal. The kick only to the 50. Fraser is spoiled by Daniels. The ball out of play. Good play, Daniels. Yes, he's a disciplined player. That's the value of Jason Daniels. Lee Matthews has also changed his taggers around. Shaw has gone on to Mark Dwyer after he kicked that goal and Krasiska has picked up the dangerous win mark. Tony Francis to half forward. Russell Morris thumps it away. Roddy McEwen and Dacos there. McEwen picks it up, puts it on the ground. And the umpire said exactly that. A free kick to Russell Morris. Denny Foley off the ground. And King Collingwood having that problem with key position forwards. Bitterbeck at the back. No mark. He's got Jason Daniels to back him up. Gets in a hand pass. Robert Harvey, sweeping hand pass. Devonport breaks the tackle. Chipped it in. Oh, they're off and running here, the Saints. Dale kick it. What will he do with it? Hand pass out. Oh, oh, Daniels has slipped over. He could have been off and running. Sopping away Tony Francis. Now Harvey, what will he do? Oh, look at that. Breaks the tackle. Magnificent play to the half forward line. And the mark has been taken by Bowie. Once again, the short option, though, Peter. Harvey should be just getting the ball down long to big low and lock it rather than going to the midget Bowie in the centre of the ground. Here's Tim Pekin. Lock it, and Lowe leads. And Lowe has it again. Stewie Lowe, seven marks. What a game at centre-half forward. Well, when you've got two big guys like that in the full forward line, why would you bother chipping the ball round to Bowie when the option was there initially for the previous St Kilda player in Harvey? Stuart Lowe has kicked two goals. Remarkable statistics and the hardest position on the ground to play. St Kilda with the lead. The lead is eight points. Can Lowe extend that to 14? Not a great kick. 
not good distance and off direction for a behind. So at half time, a nine point lead to St Kilda and Stewie Lowe unhappy with that. Stand by because at half time, the last time, it was a Tony Shaw barrage of words on Stewie Lowe after a poor kick that started a dust up at half time. But not so today. Oh, this is too important. This is sudden death. The loser goes out. St and Kilda it's very hard looking, to pick a winner. Yeah, St Kilda certainly looking uh, the better at the moment. But we've seen the game swing both uh, with Collingwood in charge in the first quarter. But the present time at halftime, St Kilda do lead. 6-7-43. A handy lead over Collingwood. 5-4-30. Umpire Brian Sheen gets us away for the second half. Dacos wouldn't have spent much time on the bench uninjured in his league career. But that's where he starts the second half. Wood spoils from behind. It comes to Gafer. His kick bumbles up towards centre wing. Brown. Gavin Brown's hand pass. Put Tony Shaw under pressure. Into right. Going across the ground, Collingwood. Into the sun is Monkhorst. He takes the mark in front of Vitovic. McGuan. Beaten in the first half by Harvey. His short pass. Plenty of possessions. Lehman. Plenty of possessions. Collingwood to move it not far. Right. Is that a push out? Yes, oh. it is. Well, the umpire's played it that way every time. McEwen's done it twice. And at the other end, Frawley once. As we look in replay, he hip and shouldered him out. The question is, was the ball within five metres? Here's the ball out wide with McDwyer. Now, he can touch this on the ground if he wants to, but he elects to kick it in towards half forward. Here's Stewie Lowe. Oh, chipping in also was Winmar. Probably got in the way then. Alan Richardson, a quick kick to the half forward line. Collingwood need to get something moving up forward. Oh, it comes to the dangerous Harvey. He's off and running. Breaks the tackle easily. Robert Harvey having a great game. In towards half forward. He's found the former Geelong player in Fletcher. So Kilda starting off well in this third term. Fletcher going long. He's looking for Lockett. And Winmar over the back. Lockett gets onto the right hand. Gives it to kick it. They'll kick it into an open goal. And he slams it through for a goal. Great start for the Saints. To start this third turn on the scoreboard, we see them lead 7 7 to 5 4. Yes, and a good side step by Tony Lockett. He set the goal up, giving it to kick it on screen there. And here we see Lockett doing the roving, came off Winmar's hands, side step, gave it to kick it, who ran directly at the goals, as you could see from behind. Good camera angle, finished off with a major. Dale Kickett, who did his pre-season with Claremont. Previous stints with Fitzroy and the West Coast Eagles. Saints forward again. Harvey gets it back with an old one-two. Harvey to lock it. One out. Ooh. Not this time. In comes Kickett. He's got a chance for his second. Goes back to Fletcher. Fletcher pops and pops. Up to Dwyer. And Dwyer kicks the ball. What a start for the Saints in the second half. Once again, kick it involved in the action up forward. Him coming onto the ground in that second quarter has sparked St Kilda. Lockett, I thought he could have taken that one. Pert fumbles with the one hand. Good work by kick it, bumping it off. But watch the way Fletcher decides to save that ball. Not kick it. Draws a player, gives it to Dwyer over the top. Who can't miss from only a yard out. Could have blazed away with the best thing with a handball. 8-7 to 5-4, St Kilda on fire. As if Harvey is caught with the ball, held to him, says Peter Carey. Crisis time for Magpies. They really have to get that ball moving. Their forward line is getting well beaten. Lee Matthews, a worried man. Young Mark Fraser's been moved on to Robert Harvey. Well, Harvey has just taken over this game by the scruff of the neck. Jason Daniels off the side of the boot. Pushing and shoving going on, a push out, but uh, that was a fair enough for Tony Woods. He won that with strength. Woods. On to Graham Wright. Wright kicks to the wide open spaces. Michael Christian versus Stewie Lowe. Christian trying to trap it. He's got it on centre wing on the left foot. Oh, he set it up. A poor kick. Sean Ralph Smith chips in to take the mark. Now he's... Oh, he's mucked around with the ball. Bad play by Sean Ralph Smith. A quick kick in towards full forward. Russell Morris ran at the ball. Was good play. He's an experienced finals player. 
Still going on with it, Russell Morris. Good play, but he gets it to Francis. Francis. Now Mark Fraser with pace. He's got the pace, but who had the courage? It was Bowie. Great play by St Kilda. Winmar tries to burst the tackle. Up to Dwyer. It drops a bit short. Peeking to Harvey. Harvey slashing them to ribbons. Low unmarked. Yes, great work there from Bowie, who came through, committed his body, won the ball well on the wing, got it to Harvey. The ball finishes with Stuart Lowe. Robert Harvey, 26 possessions already. Stuart Lowe, eight marks, and coming up for his 12th kick. Nicky Winmar also involved in that passage. He's been picked up by Alan Richardson. Lockett leads. Actually, Woods with courage got in the way, way of uh, big plugger then. Comes back to low. He wasn't confident from that distance earlier on. This time blazes away and Wright is back there for Collingwood to take the mark. 55 to 34, a 21 point lead to St Kilda. A wobbly kick. Oh, Vitovic pushed out. Goes in to get it again. Good play by the big man. Well played, Mickey Gafer, the smother. Now it's Monkhorst. Oh, wild hair bust, but it comes off. Tony Shaw, a chip pass. Collingwood off and running. Francis from centre wing. They must make something of this forward charge. Gavin Brown. Now the pacing Mark Fraser. The chip passes on Ronnie McEwen. Good lead. Good mark. Great kick. Yes, that was a delightful kick from Fraser. McEwen was leading down the ground. He placed it out in front. McEwen ran on and took an easy mark. McEwen is a beautiful kick of a football. He is directly in front. Will kick from 40 metres. There it is. Bang. Right through the middle. Ronnie McEwen has kicked his second, and the Magpies fight back. 8-7 St Kilda, 6-4 the Magpies. Yes, well, that certainly was a goal against the flow of play. Stuart Lowe could have converted one for St Kilda only seconds before this goal. But an excellent shot here from behind goal of the lead. I thought the handball from Moncourse onto Francis was an excellent one down on the half-back line. St Gilda's lead cut to 15 points. Fidovic faces Monkhorst. Shaw tackled high, will take the free kick. Dashes away out of the middle, up towards half forward. McCartney. Geez, a Gary Pert lookalike. You can't have two Gary Perts. McCartney's kick to McEwen on the bounce. He's out at 50 now. The hand pass up the ground to Brown. Put him under the pump. Down he goes. Was it in the back? No. Morris played it well then. The ball's out of play. Well, one gets a feeling that Collingwood are just about to mount some sort of uh, challenge to St Kilda. Ralph Smith limping. He's hurt. He'll have to come off. Well, a great tackle here by Tim Pekin. But the ball held to Tony Francis. A ball up. Well, Sean Rell Smith coming off, and that's bad luck because he had a great second quarter, Sean Rell Smith. Stephen Newport back on the ground, a free kick at that bounce. It's going the way of Vitovic. He had the height. Laser Vitovic, and one of the most improved players in the competition. Oh, poor kick. He's kicked it across the ground, straight to Russell. This lets the Magpies in. Now, he's got Ronnie McEwen, one out in the square. McEwen leads out to the pocket. Morris will come from behind. Morris versus McEwen, it's leaning over. Now it's Brad Rowe. Brad Rowe towards the boundary line. Is that in the back? Umpire says no. Taken away by Nathan Burke. The Collingwood Army screaming for a free kick. Out wide. This is McGuire. He can go over the top if he wants to. He attempts to do so. Now it's Winmar. Oh, great skill, Winmar. Runs into trouble. Gets in a hand pass. McGuire. Winmar again. Still going on with it, Nicky Winmar. And now he's got to come back. Whose kick is it? It must be McGuire's kick. Yes, it is. Well, what, what happens to advantage then? He said uh, paid 20 times in a game. I know it should happen, do it. Winmar's kick. Punched away by Gafer. McAdam after it. Hasn't seen much action. Devonport backs through the pack. Gets boot to ball. Out wide towards the forward pocket. No hope lock it. Monkhorst is back there, delays the hand pass, goes over the top to Christian. Kick by Christian, short of centre wing, all St Kilda here. Devonport. Got free of the tackle. Dwyer has been an important cog for St Kilda. His left footer, up for Lockett. 
Punched down by Gafer. Trouble still for oh. Collingwood. That might have been a kick in danger. Not paid. There was one paid earlier on where there was nothing in it. Now that, that was that, kicking. That, that was dangerous. That was... Whoa. Have a look at this for kicking in danger. See? Well, the hands were there. Pitcher tells a story, I think, Pete, on that occasion. Here's Stewie Lowe with the, doing the ruck work. Kicked away by Gary Pert, but a free kick has been found. And it is against Lockett. And it will go to Pert. And he's not happy about it, Big Tony. He's had a tough day on Pert. Gary Pert to McGuan. Collingwood trying to get their running game going. Alan Richardson chips it across. Oh, well played, David Grant. And one thinks Gavin Brown, not 100% fit. We saw Sean Ralph Smith come off. What's the report on him, Ross Glenn, did he? Yes, uh, right ankle there, Pete. He's, uh, he may be able to come back, but Danny Frawley, in fact, has done a left, which seems to be an Achilles, so he could be very doubtful. Here's Winmar on the 50. Breaks the tackle. Oh, he tries to set it up, but doesn't bring it back and kicks out of bounds on the full. Oh. Yeah, poor option in the end, Winmar. By slipping, both Collingwood players, Woods and Richardson, ran at him, leaving Fletcher free. The handball, there's Curly Austin on screen, a Carlton Premiership player. Could have done better handballing it inboard to Fletcher. Ex-teammate of Ken Sheldon, the current St Kilda coach, comes to the back of the pack. Tony Shaw swoops up, finds Russell. Chance for Collingwood here. A lot of space on the forward line. McCartney. Oh, Shanahan did brilliantly there. He had no right to get a hand of that. Well, he's been good, Shanahan. He has taken Dacos off the, out of the uh, game, I should say, and off the ground. Yes, yeah, so I was just wondering whether uh, about Dacos, perhaps he has got a bit of an injury, because I think uh, Matthews might have considered him up in the middle of the ground, giving them some drive. Well, there's the kick by Craig Devonport. It's a high floater. Who's got to wait under this one? It's Vitovic versus Monkhorst. Oh, Monkhorst went without it. Vitovic, he catches him with the ball. Francis grabbed when he didn't have it. It'll have to be a free kick to Tony Francis at half back. I think that was a professional free kick there from Daniels. He saw Collingwood going to sweep that one away with the extra numbers. Michael Christian. On to Richardson. Quick kick to half forward. Should be a St Kilda mark, and it is Robert Harvey. Reads that play so well. Harvey at half back for the Saints. 15 points the margin, St Kilda in front. A clash centre of the ground. Comes to Winmar. Up to set a half forward, McAdam, Gafer in front. Interference, free kick to Gafer. I wonder about those. Would the forward be dealing with the defender like that? Through Christian, it goes to right. Kick by right to centre wing. Winmar didn't have eyes for the ball. It's palm forward and almost thrown by Krasiska. Devonport. He's over the ball. Lehman goes off the ground. Chance for Collingwood now. McCartney can't break the tackle of Shanahan. Great stuff. But it comes to Rowe. Rowe puts it out in front. Big chance now for Brown. Brown skirts round. Up to McEwen. McEwen pauses. Back to Rowe. Terrific. Oh! He's missed it. Oh, oh What a build-up. It deserves six points. Yes, and there's Peter Dacos on screen. I'm sure he's thinking, well, how could he miss that one? As you said, Drew, fantastic build-up. And this is Russell Morris playing on. Now he should touch it on the ground again and kick it to the centre of the ground. It's a beautiful kick. Not out of the danger zone. Monkhorst working very, very hard. Harassing him was Pekin. Caught with it was Monkhorst. Breaks the tackle. Well played. In towards half four. Russell Morris and Ronnie McEwen. Two on one here because Mick McGuan's here. Well played, Mick McGuan. A kick. It bounces the wrong side of the goalpost. Collingwood desperately trying to mount something and get it going on their forward line. Yes, they just can't convert at the present time. Good play by McEwen there to get the ball on for McGuan. One tried to do a Dacos, just dribbling one through. The Saints by 13 points. Collingwood have had the last two scores. Both have been behind. Kick in by Morris. Daniels in front, peeking at the back. Dwyer has given the Saints some run. Won the guard and the medal during the week in the reserves. In only 10 games. Here's Wright. Dwyer can't get the ball over the boundary line. Gafer keeps it in. Francis. Whoo! Ducks the high tackle. I'm glad that one missed. Brown. The Collingwood's starting to look 
A lot better than they were in that second quarter. Brown starting to have an influence up at centre forward. Space for Russell, and this should be a Collingwood goal. Direct shot from about 40 metres. Well, they've turned it around again, the Pies. Well, they, we all knew they wouldn't lay down and uh, die, the Magpies. The fighting team. Well, I remember a game over in Perth when they won by a point in the last 10 seconds. It was the only time all day they led. They just kept on chipping away, chipping away. The margin here is 13 points. Russell to see if he can reduce it to seven. Away to the right. Three behinds in a row for Collingwood. Lee Matthews looks on with Craig Kelly. Two goals the margin. They're chipping away the Magpies, sneaking back into it. And there's a man appealing for the Collingwood players to lift. Here's a loose ball with Bowie. He's caught, gets it to Daniels. Daniels off and running. Quick hand pass to Mick Dwyer. Oh, bad hand pass. Harvey was great. Fraser to the half forward line. No mark to Shanahan. Shanahan trying to tap it on. Here's Lehman. The Magpies a chance. Rowe loses it in the tackle. Still a chance. Shanahan races at it. Gets it a quick hand pass. Bowie again. Bowie's got a running player wide in Nathan Berkey. They wanted that ball in the Saints. Here's Tim Pekin. He's calling for someone to lead. Here it is in towards full forward. And Fletcher marks at the back of Locker. Yes, well, surprisingly, Fletcher came across the pack behind Lockett. The ball slipped through Lockett's hands. Pekin was undoubtedly going for the big Lockett. There's a good mark taken by Fletcher, who was recruited from Geelong this year. Adrian Fletcher has kicked one goal. He is 35 metres out, directly in front, a vital kick. There it is. He's hooked it slightly. I think he's missed. He has. So a couple of shocking misses, one by Brad Rowe and one by Adrian Fletcher. The margin now, 13 points. And a further example why these two teams are so close. Because they don't kick enough for the score to win by a mark. Right. Played by Graham Wright, the ex-Tasmanian. Over centre wing with a kick. Oh, Chris Siska, the Queensland. First touch, no. No mark. Chris Siska told the umpire he thought he had first grab. Well, Gavin Chris Siska thought he'd taken, done enough for the mark, but I think Brian Sheehan was proved correct on that occasion. Francis, a high ball. It goes past Rowe and Burke. That was a free kick. Fraser. McEwen underneath it. Brown at the back, a goal! And the Pies are storming back at the Saints. The margin, seven points. Well, at one end, Fletcher misses what he should have kicked for St Kilda. The other end, Brown gets on the end of a lucky bounce. Here's what I thought was a free kick to Burt. Brad Rowe getting in his back. Fraser around the corner. A fortuitous bounce. Gets it to Brown, who converts for another goal to Collingwood. Gavin Brown kicks his first, and the Magpies will not lay down. They now only trail by seven points. Molkhorst doing a power of work at the centre bounces. Socket off the ground. Grabbed by Graham Wright, it was, towards half forward. And that's a free kick to St Kilda, holding the man on Newport. Stephen Newport at half back. They've got to move it quicker to their big forwards, the Saints. Now, there's Steve Newport. Low. Now, was he edged out? Oh, the umpire put the whistle up. Bowie left. Oh, boy. Not paid. What did you think, Jared? Well, initially, the free kick, the uh, grab was around the waist. But finally, the legs were impeded, and that's why he was tripped. He was off and running. Free yes. kick for mine, Pete. Low versus Monkhorst. Monkhorst wins that one. Who'll end up with the ball? Robert Harvey on the left foot. Good play because he found Vitovic. He'll want a handball here, Vitovic. There's no point handball into that play, though. He's only going out to the flank. He's got to go straight to Lockett. Vitovic down to Lockett. Lockett. Mark. Yes. Strict. Perth looks at the umpire in despair, but Lockett just used that big frame. And Gavin Krasicka coming off the ground. He'll be replaced by Stasevic. But here's the replay. Vitovic finally gets the ball down to Lockett. 
Lockett with the strength. And it's amazing that experienced players like Tim Peake and call for that ball on the half forward flank. Get playing indirect football when they got those champions up forward. Tony Lockett, a vital kick in the context of this game. Oh, what's he done? It's close. I think he's goal. He has. So Lockett kicks two, a steadier one. Steadier for the Saints. 9-8 plays 7-7. Seven, seven. Well, I think they needed that one. Collingwood had had all the play for 10 minutes or so. And here's another test of strength for both Pert and Lockett. Pert digging the legs in, trying to use his thighs for strength. And here's a good view of the big fella himself. A beautiful kick, just right of, or just left of centre. Six points result. Back in the middle, and the margin back out to 13 points. Francis for Collingwood, desperate. Winmar gets him. They have a bit of a wrestle. All the players seem to stop then as, as if they'd heard a whistle. I just saw Sean Relsmith up on the boundary line. He's stretching and trying to get some mobility back into that ankle. Probably been re-taped. So he killed a need at least one reserve there on the bench for the last quarter. But one through the pack to Harvey. has been sensational. Free kick to McAdam, yes. Well, Harvey's rapidly taking over from Lower's best man on the ground, isn't he? Well, when you consider the task he did on such a player as McGuan who might win the Brownlow in the first half. Daniels, low, can't take the mark. Comes to the front to win mark. He's not quite quick enough. Now to Richardson. Out of the danger area. Stasevich. Well done, Newport. Well, a lot of people thought the bye last week for St Kilda mightn't have been advantageous. Uh, Footscray had it a few weeks ago and came back and were flogged the next week by Carlton, who didn't make the finals. But uh, St Kilda have given a great account of themselves here today. And Collingwood are certainly not out of it. And that's the way you'd want it for a final, with still seven minutes to go in the third quarter, and then another half an hour after that. Oh, this man has been absolutely sensational, Harvey. There was a poor kick on that occasion, though. Oh, the mark dropped. Oh, it's been paid. That was still a little bit too quick. Alan Richardson. He can chip it across to Maguan. Maguan can come through setter. Kicks it quickly to the half forward line. Grant and Brown. And in fact, it's uh, McCartney chipping across to take the mark. Jason McCartney. Distance of doubt here. He's about 55 metres. He's going to go the long kick, though. If he gets onto it, it'll land up in the goal square. Here's a chance for the high markers. Knocked down by Shanahan. He's got Nathan Burke there in Newport. Oh, New Newport went back into trouble. Sock it up! separates good players from champion players and that's the fumble and there's Stephen Newport it was a very costly fumble Brad Rowe getting it off the ground for a goal Newport off the ground he's paid the price already for the bit of a fumble in the goal square that cost a goal whistle's gone in the middle a Collingwood free kick the margin is seven points Yes, it wasn't good enough from Newport on that occasion. An experienced player with a lot of finals experience for both St Kilda and Melbourne. McCartney almost with one hand. Oh. Umpire will ball it up. Well, Tony Lockett kicked a goal that might have been against the trend of play. Collingwood were coming right back at St Kilda, and back they come again. Well, coaches harp about the little things, Drew, in football. We may look back at the end of the day and say that fumble in the goal square cost St Kilda the game. Bowie whips it out of defence for St Kilda. Across to Dwyer. Can't take the mark, but he's a good crummer at ground level. The kick by Dwyer to centre half forward. Fletcher charges at it. Gaifer went to it as well. Lowe did well. But in fact, back to Gaifer it went. Is he holding it? Umpire first signal play on. Then the ball was held in there. Then he said, give it to me. So Lowe knocked that one on, but I thought he could have knocked it towards their goal. They had running players, flicked it behind play. That gave Collingwood a chance to duck back onto it. And they knocked that one forward, and this is Alan Richardson. Well, he couldn't kick it on the right, so he kicked the one there. Will it sit for Winmar? I didn't know it won't. And it rolls over the line at half forward. 
anyone's game. Seven points the margin, secure the lead as we see Lee Matthews and former star halfback Lee Adamson look on. Here's Mick Dwyer. Oh, clever hand pass. A socket off the ground. Winmar grabbed by Tony Shaw. A quick kick. Daniels, was that a free kick? Daniels got into the back of Tony Francis. The Collingwood supporters appealing for a uh, advantage decision. Here's Lehman. The Magpies go forward again. It's off the side of the boot, though, by Lehman. And not a good kick, and it rolls over the line and beats Tim Pekin. At quarter time, St Kilda led by a point. At half time, they led by nine points. And now they lead by seven points. So there's never been very much in it. Scott Russell. Has he kept it in? Yes, just to Shaw. Shaw's kick to the forward line. Brown with his back to the ball. Shanahan knocks it away from McEwen. McCartney did well. Shanahan, he's been a real surprise this year. Winmar taps on. Chance for a player to run onto the ball. A bit of a slip. He paddles for Vitovic. Kick it, gets the ball out. Bowie, bit slow. Didn't hear that, didn't see the tackler coming. Low palms the ball wide. But no St Kilda player running past, and Richardson's there for Collingwood. There's nothing in this. Mark Fraser. Now Graham Wright, the Magpies, with plenty of courage, fighting this right out towards three-quarter time as it's pumped away by Shanahan. He's been excellent. Not a lot of possession, Shanahan, but he's had Dacos taken off him. Now he's got the job on Brown. He couldn't get uh, two better players to play on. Half forward. Ralph Smith's back on the ground against Darcevich. Oh, he's got to watch this ruck contest. That was Grant. Now Starsevich. Now Lehman. A one-on-one -on -one contest. Now, was that touched as it rolls over the line and through for a behind anyway? So now the margin on the scoreboard comes down to a single kick. One goal the margin as Danny Frawley, the captain, looks on. 9-8 to 8-8 St Kilda lead. Two minutes 36 to go to three-quarter time. Morris kicks in. Grant works to the front. McCartney spoils. It comes to Harvey. A 25-metre hand pass to Pekin. Doing it by hand, St Kilda. Dwyer. Long. The two forwards are there. Low and lock it. Amazing, isn't it? Jared called for St Kilda to go straight from the centre, right up the corridor to the two forwards, and that's what they've done a couple of times in the last six minutes. And Will Lockett now come up and kick his third goal. What a great leap from behind from the big Lockett. One kick the difference. St Kilda now by 12 points. There's one minute 40 seconds left in play in this third quarter. I think if St Kilda can get one more goal, it could almost be enough. I don't think Colling would have got the strike power to kick more than three goals in a quarter. One minute and 41 seconds to three-quarter time. The Saints supporters find their voice as it's knocked down by Montpose. Oh, they're off and running again. Here's Craig Devonport. Good play to soccer it off the ground. Over the back is low. Low off the ground. It floats over the head of Lockett and uh, rolls over the line. But most importantly for the Saints, Jared, it's in their forward area. Yes, a minute and 20 seconds now, Peter. If they can get that one goal to extend their lead to just over three goals, well, well it's right on three goals. I think that'll be enough for them to win. The Magpies have to stem the tide here. Low with the left hand, taps it down straight to Christian. Oh, it's all St Kilda. Oh, they nearly mucked that one up. It's grabbed by McAdam. McAdam can chip it into half forward. Mick Dwyer waits underneath. Danger here for Collingwood. They've got to cover the lead here, cover the hole. A game and a half he's played. 18 possessions. Mick Dwyer, he's played excellent football. Here's Low in front. But coming over the back is Damien Montforce to take a very good sound safe mark. Well, that's the one when he should have kicked it to a player in the lead. There's no point bombing it down when Monkhurst is down there by himself. Good tackle and kick it. Yes, and holding the ball. Free kick to kick it. He put it on the ground. The brave 
wise decision from Peter Carey to award a free kick that close to goal. Let's have a look at it again. The legs go under Graham Wright. And was he wearing moulded soles? I'm not sure if he could pick that up. Well, it was a brave decision on the forward line, wasn't it? I think the Saints supporters thought it was a correct one. Kick by Dale Kickett. Just away to the right. Well, they recruited him, hoping that he could give them two goals a game. He's only given them one goal a game. But by gee, if he can kick another one or two here today, he'll have been worth the effort. Gary Pert with 23 seconds to go to three-quarter time. He's got to kick this long and get it out of that danger zone. Typically, good kick by Pert. Good mark, Michael Christian. They've got 18 seconds now. To get it down to score a goal would be invaluable as Graham Wright kicks wide. He found, finds uh, Scott Russell still at half-back, though. Time clock down to eight seconds. As Scott Russell brings it into the half-forward line, it hits the deck. The Magpies have got to get it up. They've got one second. There's the kick. Siren sounds. It won't be a mark. And uh, umpire puts the hands up. Gavin Brown. Three-quarter time here at AFL Park. St Kilda. 10-9-69. Lead the Magpies. 8-8-56. So it's St Kilda. 10-9 to 8-8. As Peter Carey to bounce the ball. Centre bounce. Very, very important. Who'll get it out? Tony Shaw, he gets in under the packs to try and lift Collingwood. I just don't know whether they've got the firepower up forward as we see Gavin Krasiska and Troy Lehman on... Gavin Krasiska on the right, Troy Lehman on the left. Well, they've kicked eight goals for the game, Pete. You would think they'd need to kick about five in this quarter to win. Yes, I think exactly that. There's Brad Rowe has tried very, very hard to the half-forward line. Collingwood a chance here as Scott Russell has got it. On the left foot, a quick little kick. Gilbert McAdam races after it. McAdam, oh, desperation. That helps win games, that. Bowie. Now Fletcher. They're off and running, the Saints. Here's Mick Dwyer. Around the corner he goes to the half-forward line. Stewie Lowe. A big mix up and he grabs it. Danger here for Collingwood. They do not want St Kilda to start with a goal. Dale kick it or fly at the rear. Who'll end up with a loose ball? It's Devonport from 50 metres. An open goal looms. Great Devonport kick. certain danger Craig Devonport on this occasion takes the ball off the pack a big pack flew Dale Kickett, Derek Kickett should have been on the ground Dale Kickett in fact but it's Davenport that finally swings around, ignores a short goes long to the goals and just lets it dribble through Vitovic wins in the middle well it was Devonport of course who kicked the goal that won the game for St Kilda earlier this season by a point and he's kicked another one here today. Shaw doesn't look to be moving too well. Low gets the hand pass to Fletcher. Short pass. Lockett should have taken the mark. It spills to Pert. And Gary Pert keeps Collingwood in it for a moment. But Pekin has it for St Kilda. Ralph Smith running onto it. Long to the goal square. Pert hands to it again. Kick it. Wright is there to rush it behind. They're under the hammer, Collingwood. Well, speaking about little things, Drew, as we talked about in the third quarter with Newport's fumble, it was amazing that Tony Lockett could drop such an easy mark. McGaper. Oh, he's got himself into trouble here, but he gets away with it to Pert. They badly need a couple of quick goals, the Magpies. Pert to the half-back line. Brad Rowe has tried very, very hard, but the pressure's still mounting as Scott Russell. Oh, here's their big chance, Collingwood. Christian... Brings it in towards half forward. It doesn't quite reach the target. Well picked up, Ronnie McEwen. He wants to give a hand pass. It's a wild one. Tony Shaw's got to wait underneath it. Gets his hand pass in. The dangerous Dacos goes to ground. No free kick. Here's Fletcher. Fletcher kicks it straight to the waiting arms of Alan Richardson. He kicks it to McEwen. He can go to McGuan. McEwen waits. He's got Christian to give it to. Christian waits and marks. Now the distance of doubt here. He'll have to kick from... Oh, no one on the mark. Now he's going back to steady. He'll have to kick from right on 50. Michael Christian. And with the heavy... Well, it's a little bit heavy underfoot. The distance, a big doubt. 
Here's the kick from Michael Christian. Slightly off the side of the boot. And it slicks through four, one behind. Gavin Brown didn't take Jason Daniels in between the man on the mark and the kicker, did he? Christian off and Gavin Krasiska on. Well, I thought it might have happened a long time ago, but maybe Collingwood are short of options because Lowe has been superb at centre-half forward. Back at centre wing now. Russell runs out of room and will have a throw in. Craig Starsevich now being moved on to Lowe. As Lee Matthews looks pretty tense in the box. Well, his players have been in these close games so often. Don't write them off yet. Scott Russell. The kick up to the 50. Good distance with that kick. Here's Dacos. We've seen very little of the magic of Dacos today. But here's a bit now. He paddles the ball up the ground. Krasiska comes in board, but it's chopped off by Fletcher. And with poise, Fletcher finds Grant. David Grant being a good, honest contributor. Oh, danger here for Collingwood because Gilbert McAdam gives it to McGuire. Where's the big fella Lockett? He ducks back into the square. Lowe's there also. Low and Lockett. Low punched away. Oh, Lockett! Still 20 minutes of play remaining. But this is better play from St Kilda. McAdam gives the one hand ball to Dwyer. He runs his full yardage. It goes bang with the ball straight to the powerhouse combination. The dynamic duo of Lowe and Lockett. And together they score the goal. Far better than fiddling around going any which way. Nothing it up. Four goals now to lock up. 127 for the season. Equals his personal best. Kick last year. Bowie out of the middle. It bounces up. Lock it palms down to Lowe. St Kilda looking all encompassing now. But Lowe fumbles. In goes right. Kick it steals the ball. He's legged, is he? No whistle. Pert out of defence. Up towards centre wing. Great distance with every kick today, Pert. Oh, what a mark by Grant. David Grant's kick. Back to centre half forward. Dwyer's there. And McAdam. It's whipped away by Wright. His hand pass is good out in front of Russell. Ball sits all right for Scott Russell. In he comes to Dacos. Dacos' handball. Awkward. Woods. Kick by Tony Woods. McEwen. Good mark. Well, that was a good mark and a good setup by Collingwood. Good delivery by Woods once he gathered the ball. Now McEwen has kicked beautifully today. He's only kicked uh, two goals. Chances have been limited. He's only had six kicks. If he kicks this, they're still in it. Oh, poster. They needed that, didn't they? Bad. Crowd today, 74,253. They had 80,000 at the MCG when they met the first time this year. Russell Morris is... Done a very good job since replacing Denny Frawley at fullback. He's only had five kicks, but he's put a lot of pressure on each opponent he's had. Now, the kick to the half back line, there are two. So, oh, Pekin! They certainly have lifted St Kilda. They can smell victory. And players are performing deeds usually not capable of. Here's McCartney. Oh, cop one across the head. Alan Richardson runs straight at the ball off the side of the boot. Mickey McGuire looks very, very tired. Pekin, well, Pekin's done a pretty good job on Mick McGuire. He's taken him out. And have a look at this fly again. There isn't another sport in the world that can give a highlight like that. Great mark to Tim Pekin. I notice Robert Harvey standing about 40 metres out in front of the goal and limping somewhat. Perhaps he's got a bit of a minor leg injury. Here's Fletcher going back to Grant <laughs> on the chest of Shanahan. Just forward of halfback. Vitovic on his own in the centre of the ground. Monkhorst now closes the gap. Oh, Vitovic takes an excellent mark. Off to Dwyer. What a surprise he's been. Mick Dwyer to centre half forward. Harvey. Punch away by Fraser. Comes to right. Good tackle by Kickett. Pert under constant pressure. Here's Wright. Incredibly still going on that injured foot. Bouncing ball. Monkhorst keeps it going. Collingwood's way. Fraser dragged down. He'll take a free kick. It is four goals the difference. And four goals by Collingwood could get them a draw and buy them extra time. Fraser goes short to right. 
minutes, just under 18 minutes left. The kick to the 50. Brown almost a one-hander. The umpire paid the free. Gavin Brown's free kick way out at half forward. He chips it across. Still another two kicks out from goal. Scott Russell, he'll look for a short one. The lead is on. Now he chips it in towards the pocket. Ronnie McEwen, can he get there? No, he can't. Now he's got it on the bounce. Handball's back, but Jason Daniels chips in. That was well played to Bowie. Bowie's made a big difference since coming on the ground. And as uh, Peter Dacos, Pete Burns shifted up into the centre of the ground. It's just looking down, there's a St Kilda player getting attention at half back. It's Harvey. It's Robert Harvey. Gee, they wouldn't want him injured. Here's Scotty Russell. 45 metres out from goal. He bombs it in towards goal and sneaks it in for a behind. Uh, there's Robert Harvey. Well, it might be cramped there because they're massaging both calves. Yes, well, it's no wonder he's covered plenty of territory today. The ground a little bit soft, and that accentuates the uh, cramping sensation. And he'd have, he'd have leather poisoning from 31 possessions. Crumbs gathered by McAdam. Thumps it long to centre half forward. Low wrestles off his opponent. Oh. It comes to Harvey. Injured one minute. Dishing out the hand pass the next. Devonport. One out is Lockett. He's dragged down by Port. No whistle for that. We'll have a throw in. And Tony Lockett. I hope you can't lip read. I cannot believe that. Oh, come on, umpire. How could he let that go? The difference with a full forward and a full back. That is the difference. Well, the ball in the forward pocket. Lockett couldn't believe it. And you've just got to make comment on a decision like that. Yes, it was an interesting one. I was a bit more uh, interested in Devonport's blaze away there. At least he was looking for Lockett. It was a uh, player windmill running free in between those two. Well, here's Stewie Lowe over the head. Up into the goal square, it's fisted away by Pert. His big laser bit of it. He goes to ground. Brad Rowe will try and belt this out of defence. Collie would have to mount something soon, or it's end of the year for them as Brad Rowe chips it in short and he found the man in Prasiska. Pretty dark here at Waverley. Haven't used the lights yet. Prasiska. Just over centre wing with his kick. Daniel spoils Brown. And Dwyer sees it out. St Kilda need the ball out of play as much as possible. But there's still 15 and a quarter minutes to go. Look at these Magpie supporters. They're biting their fingernails to the elbow. Collingwood won the flag in 1990. Slipped back last year and missed the finals by half a game. They're back. But they're under pressure now. Woods tried to bounce around but couldn't get around. He's got it again. The tackling of St Kilda superb. That was Winmar that time. McAdam for St Kilda. He's passed to half forward. Low again. Great play, that one. Direct. Fletcher. Lock it. Is that a free kick? I think the umpire had paid it. He had paid it and he took the mark anyway. Great direct play there from St Kilda. Straight down the middle. Pinpoint passes involving both Low, Fletcher and Lockett. Well, when you've got Lockett and Low in your key forward posts and you've got Winmar and McAdam and Lethal, they're going to take a lot of stopping St Kilda. They're a very good side. Lockett directly in front for his fifth goal of the game. Tony Lockett, the big full forward, splits the centre. So he's kicked five. Say the big full forward to the umpire. He really let him have it. And they said, what about that one? Lee Matthews looks on. He knows it's going to be tough now. McAdam with the ball. This piece of play results in what I believe is obviously the, seat, the sealer for St Kilda. Tony Loggett screaming at the umpire. There's a shot from behind goal straight through the middle. Dacos rips it out of the centre. 88 to 59. Tough for Collingwood. Oh, good. Mark McEwen. Well, Dacos coming, having a run in the centre of the ground. His ability to move the ball out of the centre could well have been used earlier in the piece. However, he has been shifted now, but I think time will beat Collingwood. And this is a good mark from Ron McEwen, but the two sides that will be wrapped in this result will be the West Coast Eagles and Hawthorne. The winner of which now will go straight into the second semi-final. Kicked by McEwen. A mighty effort. But, yes, has he got it? He has. Well, that 
travelled 60 metres and maybe has kept the pies in it. Four goals and they can win it from here. Dacos out of the middle. Goes long and direct. McEwen, good enough. A strong grab, McEwen, both out in front of the face and above the head. And a pretty good kick from the 50 metre line. The ramifications of a St Kilda victory here are enormous, particularly for tomorrow's game. 13 minutes just over for the Magpies to get themselves back into it. That's McDwyer, I should say. Tony Woods back with the flight. Has taken the mark. They need another quick one. Woods. Just to put a bit of pressure on the Saints. Here's Monkhorst. Can't mark. The ball hits the deck. Mick Dwyer, he's had a great game. On to Grant. Grant to the space and he's found McAdam. They've got just a little bit too much skill, the Saints, all around the ground. McAdam's really lifted Jared. Yes, I'm sure that Sheldon will be pleased with his improvement in form. He can get a lot better than he's displayed today. Perhaps we'll see better next week, given that St Kilda win. And here's McGuan going wide to Stasevic. Stasevic out to centre wing. Krasiska takes the mark or the free kick. It'll be the free kick to Gavin Krasiska. The margin is 23 points. We have 12 and a half minutes left. Collingwood have done it before. Brown, no. Daniels ripped away from the pack by Fraser. Burke is there. His kick back to centre wing. It's punched on. McGuan at the back. Still giving the Pies a chance. McGuan short of half forward. Burke punches. What a pickup by Francis off his bootlaces. Right. Good running by Russell. Kick by Russell for McEwen. Poor kick. Didn't reach him on the full. Ronnie's got it, tries to tunnel his way through and does to McCartney. His hand pass is not bad. Russell dodges from 50, goes long and kicks a goal. Yes, well, if the alarm bells weren't ringing after Collingwood's last goal, they should be now. Scott Russell, in an individual performance, won that ball across half forward. Got it to McHugh and then butters up after a handball from McCartney. He goes it alone and bangs it from outside 50. Terrific goal. And now is the time that St Kilda must fire, lift and work as a team to quell this challenge from Collingwood. The Magpies, they never say die spirit showing out again as we see Shanahan with a quick kick to half forward, oh look who's there Stewie Lowe, uncontested he's got to get it quickly to Lockett, Lockett's on the lead the kick by Lowe in towards half forward, Harvey, he's injured he couldn't get back, McCadam with skill McCadam from directly in front kicks it gold and puts it through from behind, he's not happy with himself I, I thought Lowe should have gone to Lockett when he got that mark yes he saw Mark Dwyer out over on the forward pocket alone the option was there, it was just the, just the disposal that let him down. Well, you can't stress enough that the Collingwood players have all been in these tight ones before. It must give you some experience in how to handle it. Brown, a great mark. They need a lift from Tony Francis. He's had 20 possessions, but hasn't been that dominant, considering he had about eight of those in the first quarter. He has gone missing. McCartney goes to ground. Grant just gets the hand pass out. Woods is here for Collingwood. Back near centre wing. He goes in. That's the way to play it. To Russell, who kicked the last lifting goal. His pass to McEwen. Fantastic. Well, he's taken three strong marks on the lead in the last quarter, McEwen. One of his kicks hit the post. The other one scored. And what will he do with this one? He could give Collingwood still a chance of pinching the game if he kicks this. Well, he's a great kick of a football, Drew. He's the man you want to have the kick. Three goals the difference. Now it's two goals the difference. Well, Petty, you say don't write off Hawthorne. Well, don't write off Collingwood now. Perhaps they are still in it with just two goals the deficit. Plenty of time left, just under 10 minutes. Scotty Russell once again involved as his big Ronnie. Looks a bit rotund, but he's lifting. So are Collingwood. Collingwood showing tremendous character as they fight back the trail by two goals as Mick Dwyer kicks it to low and the big fella has marked yet again. Vital centre bounce take away that one, Peter. Low, chips it in. He's got Lockett and Winmar. Um, 
McAdam, I should say. McAdam has marked in the forward pocket. Even a behind here would be handy for St Kilda, Jarrett. Well, he should have sealed it a couple of minutes ago with an easy shot at goal. Under no pressure from 40 metres out. This one will be the difficult one. He'll probably slam this one straight through the middle. Well, he's on a pretty acute angle. They lead St Kilda, that is, by two goals. If he kicks a point, they lead by 13 points, and it makes three kicks Conning would have to uh, score to get up with the Saints. What can he do? Pressure on Gilbert McAdam. The Collingwood supporters with their hearts in their mouths. on his own. As Gilbert McAdam kicks, it's close. It's very close. In fact, oh, McAdam thought it was a goal. But the goal up by said one point only. So again, Collingwood live. 13 points to the margin. There's a keen Saints fan, Gary Pert. He's got a kick long. Nine years with Fitzroy. He's been great for Collingwood this year. Stasevich takes a fine mark. Russell's had plenty of run in this last quarter. He's had a virus for about the last month. It's a miracle he's going so well. Fraser marks right to oh, the poor handball. Rowe gathers. Keeps it going his way. Burke, good tackle. Thumped on by Francisco. Chance for Collingwood again. Brown just dives in front oh. of a mobile tram. Could have been Brown's free, couldn't it? Well, he did take one in the back. Umpire obviously declaring that he... Uh, Have a look at this. Just dived on the ball. Yeah, oh, free kick. don't tell me that's not a free kick. Well, I heard Lee Matthews describe him yesterday as a human battering ram. He's got that many injuries, he should be in hospital, not playing football. It's at Collingwood's half forward area. Great tackle. Caught with the ball. Not played. Kicked away by Harvey, who doesn't look too fit to me. The race is under the ball. This is Russell Morris. He should be heading towards the boundary line. He should. He's an experienced player. Or was he held? He's still Take going. Take it over. Russell Take Morris. it over. Oh, in the back, was it? No, it wasn't. It'll be a throw in. And great play for Morris, but It was great. Experienced finals player, Jerry, that showed out then. He didn't make it look obvious. No, he had to work it to the boundary line, then was happy to see it trickle over. He had Mick McGuan behind him. That was a great piece of play by the experienced Morris. Monkhorst, it's shark by Pekin. Back to Bowie. Short of low. Oh, cleans up his own man. Stasevic. Breaks away Craig Stasevic. The kick is good to Tony Shaw. Pretty quiet game from the skipper. Brown leads. Gavin Brown, two kicks to goal from there. McEwen's your man. McEwen. Let's go. Oh, Well, McEwen, Brown and Scott Russell have just lifted unbelievably in the, this last 15 minutes. Three fantastic individual performances and they'll be responsible for the victory if Collingwood can get up. Well, Shanahan did everything right. McEwen, superb. And another great kick. Three in the last quarter for Ronnie McEwen and the pie's behind by just seven points. Collingwood. Saints players, if they want to play in finals, it'll be a premiership side. They're going to find something. They are being tested right down to the wire now. And we'll find out what their medal is made of in the remaining six and a half minutes of this play. Fantastic comeback this by Collingwood. They were down and out. They've done it all year. They fight it out to the finish and they're doing it again. Seven points to the margin. Who'll get it out of the centre? A vital centre bounce. Tony Shaw in there. Graham Wright with a quick kick to the half forward line. Punched away by Fraser. It's a loose ball. The bounce favours peak and or a vital bounce it was too as he chips it out wide. Robert Harvey can hardly hobble after this ball as he kicks it over. Oh, look, he clutches the thigh. Well, he should take Harvey off. Sheldon because with the legs that bad I know it's a cutthroat situation but that's the time when you're going to pull a hamstring or tear a calf muscle well, they're missing his drive here's Tony Francis the Magpies go forward again Russell Morris should mark and he does at half back no yeah. doubt about that they need some fresh legs out in the ground Peter They've got Newport on the bench I know he made a blue early in the piece they need some run the lights have been on for about five minutes very dark here at Waverley up near the centre Winmar can't grab it. Comes to McGuan. Collingwood behind by seven points. Here's that man, Brown. Knocked over by Daniels. No whistle. Listen to the Collingwood fans go quick. The umpire put the whistle to his mouth and neglected to blow it. 
McAdam goes out of the air towards centre wing. He wants it out. Russell would like it in. And the umpire will throw it in. Scott Russell, hasn't he worked hard? Great individual performance. That's courage. That is real courage in football. Finding something when your gut says you can't go any further. Well, a champion is a man who gets up when he can't, and that's what he's done. Dead right. There's Dale Pickett, who's played a fine game. The ball slightly towards half forward for the Saints. We've got four and three quarter minutes of play left. The Magpies have to make up seven points. There's Dacos. They're off and running. Russell has played a magnificent final term. Under pressure, he gets it to the half forward line. Knocked on by McCartney. Oh, the Secure Bays dive on the ball. It's a loose one with Dale Kickett. He can run away, chip it into the centre of the ground. Mick Dwyer should give it off. He does. Robert Harvey summoning all his courage as he's suffering from prep. prep. Brings it into the big fellow Lockett. Lockett marks. He'll have to kick 50 metres. But he's quite capable of doing that. Nathan Burke injured. Yes, he copped the Tony Francis boot right in the mouth on that last little foray. And that's the way. That's the reason why the St Kilda coach would say that's why I left him on the ground. He's a match winner, but still, still thinking next week. Well, the rain is tumbling down in this final couple of minutes. One would think if he kicks this, it'll be shut the gate for the Magpies. Big Tony Lockett for goal number six. Belts the ball, and I think he kicks it across the face. Yes. So the Magpies breathe again. Three and a half minutes of play left. 13-13, plays 12-11. Two kicks needed by the Magpies, and there's an agitated-looking coach of St Kilda, Kenny Sheldon. Well, Collingwood have played seven games this year that have been decided by a goal or less, and they've won five of them. Does luck run out eventually, or do you just get practised at winning them? Low marks once more. Francis off the ground, replaced by Lehman. Now, Stuart Lowe has been superb. 13 marks at centre-half forward. What a game. Too far out for him to score. Bangs it long to the goal square. Big punch by Monkhorst. Morris just gets the hand pass away to Fletcher. He's lost it. Kick it. Shaw's in there. Chance for Stasevich. He takes the ball over the boundary line. Two minutes 50 remaining in the second elimination final. Well, the rain won't help the Magpies, unfortunately. They need it dry to get that ball up there. Here's a chance for them, though, as uh, the tackle's put on Richardson. Graham Wright, dodging, weaving, gets his boot to it. They've got to get it quickly out of defence. Was that a free kick on Rowe? The holding, I think it was. Yes, good umpire. Brad Rowe at half-back. They have to race it up and score a goal. Brad Rowe to the centre wing area. Sean Ralph Smith goes the fist. It's a big fist. Back towards half forward to low. Now Harvey, probably best man on the ground as Harvey chips it to the half forward line. It's a loose ball and eventually it rolls over the line as the time clock ticks down to two minutes to go. Well, they need two goals to win at Collingwood and they have two minutes in which to do it. They are the walking wounded. They haven't got 18 fit players on the park. There's no doubt about that. Here's Rowe firing out a lightning hand pass to McGuan. They've still got a chance. They can kick a goal here, get it back and win it in the centre. Stasevic goes over the top with the hand pass. McCartney runs onto it. McCartney straightens. Steers it into Brown. The spoil was oh. by Daniels. Here's Lehman with fresh legs. Ralph Smith goes across the ground. That's safe. It looks all over now. The Saints fans believe it too. The mark by Pekin. The hand pass to Harvey. And we have a minute 15 left. The short kick. Oh, well played, Graham Wright. He fisted away. Big low is there again. What a game he's played. It's tapped on to Dale Kickett. Tapped on again to Bowie. Oh, this could be curtains for Collingwood. Because Bowie kicks to an open goal. It's across the face. As the time clock ticks down to the minute mark to go. It'll be a throw-in to Gilders forward pocket. A valiant effort. A gutsy effort by Collingwood. There's Alan McAllister and Graham Allen looking on. The president... And the football manager, they look dejected because they realise the time clock won't allow Collingwood to do it. Over the back. They're still going on with it, the Magpies. Maybe there is time. Peter Dacos, he's looking for Krasiska. Oh, he can't hold them up. One would think that was the vital bit. 
as it's taken by Shaw and Ralph Smith. And Krasiska holding an arm. He's one of the walking wounded. Fletcher finds the boundary line. Umpire calls for the throw-in. 26 seconds remaining. The Pies need two more goals. St Kilda will advance. It gets them a spot in the first semi-final. And Collingwood, who won 16 games for the year, will bow out after one final. No team in history's ever done that. Taken over by Devonport. Eight seconds remaining. The Ruckman have given superb displays. And right over the top, Morris. The final 